Now in my eyes, you can play Minecraft in five different ways. You have the speedrunners, the builders, the redstoners, the hardcore survivalists, and finally, the PvPers. Each type plays the game differently, and today I'm going to be building the perfect biomes for each type. Apart from PvPers, because I'd have to build a server for them to kill people on, and I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry. Now, firstly though, this video is sponsored by the subscribe button. I've teamed up with the subscribe button to give you guys a chance to boost my ego. All you guys have to do is hit that subscribe button, which is 100% free, and yeah, that's it. Isn't that crazy? Anyway, let's get into our first biome, and and that is for the speedrunners. Now, what are speedrunners like? Well, they start more Minecraft worlds a day than Tommy in it swears in his videos. They don't really care about how pretty the world is. They have a weird obsession with villages. And they love a lava pool. This is going to be a very ugly biome probably, but let's get building it. I didn't want to make a massive biome for every single one. Instead, I just did a 75 by 75 square, which is still pretty big. And we started off with this one, biting in some lava pools, a bit of water, a ravine, which you'll see why for later. And whilst building this, I thought this was looking hideous so I decided to record a clip of me saying this is looking hideous. Yes this is looking hideous. I told you I did and we don't lie here on the Small Spoons channel but this ravine after I terraformed it a bit is probably the nicest looking thing in this build to be honest this whole area just looks horrible. Look at all the lava. But if we head into that ravine we will show you why the ravine is here. Every single ravine in this biome has a stronghold in it and that stronghold will be popping out a little bit so it's very easy for these speedrunners to find. Also you can probably see on the side there that I place some resources in this biome. The only ones you can get are coal and gold, which you can use for trading in the nether. Then I got working on the village here, and the village has one tie up a big house, and it's also got a little house, and these houses have a lot of beds in them. There's also a barn, which I'll show you in a bit, which just has hay bales in it, because you can use that to convert it into food. I then added in a load of trees, plus a mountain of gravel, because gravel is also useful. So if you didn't know, speedrunners always want gravel, because they need to get flint from it, so they can get to the nether with the flint and steel, and normally they have to kill an iron golem which I think there should be one yes there's one right here however in this village there's also this statue this is a village statue I've added in it's got some gold it's got some iron and more gold which you can use for trading and also making iron stuff meaning you don't have to kill the iron golem saving you a bit of time this is the barn over here as you can see it's just full of hay very useful for getting a load of food and the big house design here has some furnaces in it, it's got a bed downstairs, and it's also got three beds upstairs. So four beds per house, very nice. Whereas the little one, and these are all the same, have two beds and a chest. And you know, you might have some interesting stuff in that chest. Making this ideal for your speed running. As for the ravine, there's an easy way down. As you can see, there's gold and coal everywhere. If you break into the fortress at some point, you can see that all the ender eyes, bar one, are completed, making this the perfect and the spawner and that is the same in everyone in this biome. The lava and the water for making your never portal you just gotta hope you get lucky and there's a fortress nearby. But apart from that I'd say this is the perfect biome for speed running. Does it look nice? Not really, but it's perfect for what you want it for. Maybe the next one will look a bit nicer. As that's right, next up we have the builder biome. And we all know builders love a good terraforming, need all types of blocks, must have pretty trees and can appreciate a nice structure. So we start off with a lovely river. However, this river has some cool blocks in it. At the bottom of this river, we've got some dark prismarine, some mossy cobblestone and some coarse dirt, plus some coral and some seagrass and sea pickles, which can be used. We also have these little mini beaches here, which have some cacti on them and some palm trees as well for our jungle wood and jungle leaves. There's also some mossy cobblestone rocks and we have a lovely waterfall falling through here because it just looks nice and it's all lovely and terraformed. And guess what? More wood. We got some spruce trees up there and every single flower which spawns nearby as well as well as oak trees oh my gosh there's just so much happening in this biome next up we have a structure which has actually got a beacon inside it but it's surrounded by bedrock which means you can't get to all those blocks we didn't want to make this too powerful but the effect of the beacon has haste on it we had to punch a llama quickly and then we got working on the rest of the trees i wanted every single type of tree to be in this biome also i didn't want the biome to be flat because i wanted different options 
for building in different places. We had a birch tree added in as well, which is obviously looking a bit nicer than a normal birch tree. And we also have a dark oak, and you'll notice on the ground as well, there's some bushes, and those bushes are made from acacia logs and leaves. And basically, that is it. We added in a mushroom, we added in some bushes. I'm pretty sure you can get every type of block in this biome. So this biome has pretty much every single thing I feel like you would need for building other than never items. And there's a few things I kind of didn't get a chance to show in the time lapses, such as this dried out lake here. This has some clay at the bottom of it, which will be very useful for many people I know. We got the little bamboo section as well here, so you can get your bamboo. The dark oak trees have vines on them for if you need vines. You got some mushrooms around here, mossy cobblestone rocks, also some granite rocks as well for your granite needs. The cacti as well on all the beaches with the sugar cane and also our little campfire here. This is just for, you know, a nice little decorative part of the biome. All sorts of wildlife live in here. We've got some tropical fish, sheep, pigs. No chickens, of course, as they are horrendous. And also on this structure, you have a few blocks that you would find in the nether or the ocean. Lots of dark prismarine and you can see... The beacon here is lit and beacons actually go through bedrock apparently. So in survival mode, you would not be able to get to this. But apart from that, I think this is a very lovely biome. I would very much like to build a house in this area but I'm not going to. Instead, we're going to move on to our next biome. So next up, we have a biome for hardcore players. So I'm thinking no ravines or any steep drops. No mobs, obviously. Hardcore players love bragging about how long they've survived and of course, golden apples. So where can mobs not spawn? That's right, in a mycelium biome. So I've gone for some mycelium here, which honestly is quite ugly, but it doesn't really matter because this is about surviving and being safe. As you can see here, I've actually created a mine. This is called a safe mine because it's going to be lit up for you. It's kind of like a, you know, your regular old mine in Minecraft, except this one is nice and safe. No mobs are going to spawn in there. I also decided to make some trees around because trees drop apples and apples are very good. I made a really big tree with loads of leaves, so there's more chance of getting those apples. And there's a few more things I added in, but they're quite small, so I'm going to go show you them now. So honestly, a, a pretty ugly biome, really, isn't it, when you look at it like this? But we're going for practicality overlooks here. So let me explain a few things. We don't have water because water, even if it's one block high, you have a chance of drowning. So we put ice instead so you can be very careful. You can break the ice, get some water from that. I've explained the trees and how they have loads and loads of leaves for dropping all those apples. We've got some hay bales here because I'm sure a lot of people already know this, but if you drop down onto a hay bale, you take less damage than you would on a normal block. So you can take these. So if you jump, you can put a hay bale down quickly to make sure you don't get hurt. Now you may notice a few other things around such as this and these over here. Let's start with these ones. These ones are our remember to eat station. So don't starve it says and it's got a steak in it just in case you're getting a bit low on food. Just a little precaution you know and each one of these is a different message. Don't go hungry with your steak. And the final over here remember to eat which is what my chat spams every time I'm live streaming and getting low. We've also got in case of fire where you get a bucket of water. You can break the item frame, get a bucket of water very nice indeed in case you catch fire, which would be unfortunate. Now you've probably seen me skip over this big section in the middle here. And this will be a counter of how long you've survived in hardcore mode. This will count up with the day. Every time a new day passes, this will tick over. So if you survived, so honestly, I probably should have made this a bit bigger because it should really be like up to a thousand, shouldn't it? But it says, well done you, just congratulating them because you know, they need the congratulation, the hardcore players, they need to know that they've done good. I'd even notice that mycelium has some sort of like, you know, weird particle dust coming out of it. I've never noticed that before. But let's head down into the mine and in this mine, you can see we've got a chest. It's got some golden apples and golden iron in it. There's some gold ore here, the lanterns. So it'd be nice and lit up. No mobs will spawn in here. You can come down. Oh, what's this? A book. Well done. Well done, you are still alive. It's just another little message there congratulating them. And there's one final thing in the biome. You may have noticed it, but you probably didn't. What's that over there? A bit of green grass. Now they'll have one of these in the biome. It might be hidden under a tree, but it's hidden here under this grass here, standing out and underneath is a barrel. And in that barrel, a totem of undying. A nice little treat if you stumble across one of these biomes in your hardcore world. But there you have it. I think that's pretty perfect for the hardcore players. I also forgot that I added in a sign up here which says warning, 
drop. So obviously there'd be a few of these around in any places that are steep. This is the only one in this biome because it's relatively flat as we want it to be as safe as possible. So there's the hardcore biome. But what if you're more into redstone? Well, I have a feeling that the next biome will be redstone. I don't know why I said I have a feeling. I know for certain it will be. So how do redstoners play the game? Well, we know they love redstone. Everything has to be automated. They need space to put their machines and God, they just love a piston door. Definitely not referencing someone with a mustache there. So my idea for this biome is it is a very rare biome that you'd find in a deserty or badlands sort of area. And that is because it has quite a lot of good stuff in it. As you can see in this biome, the redstone actually grows on trees. All these trees here would be new trees added into the world. And these trees, that they have redstone on them. Also getting to that piston door thing, here we have made a very, very hard to break piston door. It's made out of obsidian. However, if this was an actual biome, I'd want it to be made out of a block that is unbreakable to anyone. As there's a trick on how to get into this biome, and that involves this lava pool in the middle where we've got some redstone and a barrel and you see those things around the outside Yeah, let me show you what those are because it's quite hard to get to this thing I think so kind of like a Badlands biome. This has some different layers to it all being kind of red We got the terracotta at the top We got the red terracotta here and then we got red concrete underneath the trees that have redstone on it I've just used some dark oak stripped wood here. I think in reality if I was to do this again I'd probably use a custom type of wood here, but unfortunately we're in vanilla, so we can't do that. Other than the trees and that though, this biome is quite barren because this biome has one main thing on it, and that is this thing here. And as you can see, all the skeletons have despawned. In real life, this would not happen. These would all have skeletons that would not have despawned in it, like so. As the idea is right, you've got this vault over here. To get into this vault, it's blocked off by bedrock, but you have to put something into a hopper and that's all surrounded by bedrock. So the only way to get into it is to get this thing here. And I thought about making this a bit harder and probably in reality, I'd make it a lot bigger with a lot more skeletons. But the idea is you've got to, in survival mode, let me see if I can give myself some, some blocks. You got to get to the center and there'd be lots more skeletons shooting at you. So you'd try and jump across and you've got to try and not get hit by one skeleton as the other ones shoot at you, which is kind of tricky, as you can see, and I'm about to die. So, yeah, basically, you've got to get to the center, and in the center is the barrel with the code, but it's too late, I'm dead. Oh, spawned in the wrong biome. But that's the basic idea, and once you get this code, completely randomly generated in length, you can get to here, and it will open up this vault. And I've actually made this vault six layers deep just so it's easy to do that than it is to just break this as it's obsidian. But obviously I said I want it to be some other type of material. And in this vault, you've got a load of cool stuff. You've got a load of diamonds. You've got some gold, redstone, and you've got a chest full of redstone related stuff like hoppers, redstone lamps, dispensers, etc. So I think redstoners would love that. You get a nice redstone reward where you can go make your automated farms. There's lots of space here for those automated farms. Bit of a different vibe from this one and the other ones, but I like it. I think it's fun and I hope you redstoners out there would like this one as well. So there are four biomes. Obviously, my favorite is the building biome, but each are unique and different in their own ways. And I'm really happy with how this has turned out. Unfortunately though, guys, that is all we've got time for for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy. Make sure to leave a like and comment and subscribe if you're new and I shall see you another time. Goodbye.